What happens to EV batteries once they're too weak to power automobiles, like this SUV? Well, sometimes they get a second shot at life and can light up entire streets in India. Usually they use between 100 to 80 to 75 percent, which is not very efficient, right? I mean, it's like you have one liter water bottle, you drink half a liter and you throw a half liter away. Because they could still supply electric rickshaws with power for a full 10 years. Are the so-called second life batteries the key to new mobility, especially in India? With electric mobility taking center stage, bringing resource efficiency into batteries becomes a major factor. After all, second life batteries don't just protect the environment, they're also cost effective. Creating batteries and then how we bring them back into the ecosystem without infinitely mining out resources from, uh, from the planet is, is probably going to decide whether this is a sustainable solution or not. If I could repurpose batteries, I extend the usable life of batteries. After around 100,000 kilometers, batteries are usually too weak to power electric SUVs. They need to be changed. The floorboards of electric cars contain dozens of battery modules. And after their first life as the heart of an EV, Indo-German startup Nunam converts them into second life batteries. And these portable batteries light up streets in India. German-born Pradeep Chatterjee co-founded Nunam with Darshan Virupaksha in Bengaluru. The startup wondered, can batteries continue to be used in a second life? Usually they use between 100 to 80 to 75 percent. That's where in the first life people are usually using it. And between that 75 percent and 50 percent threshold, there is still in most cases some usable energy which you can still use. But in, in the first life application it doesn't get used, uh, which is not very efficient. They started in 2017 with used laptop batteries. First the batteries are dismantled. Then each individual battery cell is tested to see how much energy it can still hold. The functional cells are assembled into a small portable battery, which can become a valuable source of light for an Indian street vendor. The project was funded by Audi, and in cooperation with the auto manufacturer, the idea of building larger and more powerful Second Life batteries for the Indian market arose. A perfect way to reuse the modules from Audi e-tron batteries. Uh, this also helped us to broaden the view. Small villages and they, people which are smiling and using uh, our batteries, and the Second Life become a real first life for, for them, for those people. Mm. That was thrilling to me. The German automobile group has been working on battery recycling for a while. In fact, they're already being used to supply power to their production plant in Ingolstadt in Bavaria. Here you can see real car batteries. They come out of the car really like this, put here, plug in, and then put an inverter, and then they are connected and can do something for the grid. Audi is currently building a series of exclusive fast charging stations in Germany, dubbed charging hubs. In order to have enough energy for these to operate around the clock, former Audi e-tron modules are used as buffer storage. And the plan is for used Audi batteries to help electrify entire regions in the Sahel zone in Africa. Together with the social enterprise Africa Green Tech, the automotive group is planning large solar networks that can store energy within Second Life batteries. We can bring now mobility and electricity together, where people do not have electricity at all. They first time learn energy, not from a diesel generator, from, but from sun power, but they also want to have uh, energy at the night. So they, they use these used batteries to store the energy during the day and then can use it at the night. Nunam's batteries in India are also powered by the sun. 
They get their energy from solar panels at various distribution stations. People like Hussein here rent out the Second Life batteries for around two euros a week in Bangalore. Each battery contains a chip so that its condition can be monitored via an app in the Nunam headquarters. Each battery is internet connected. As these batteries are internet connected, we get advanced notifications at their end of life and pick up these batteries for recycling while we also provide a new one as a replacement. In the end, the Nunam batteries end up in a recycling plant in Golapuram at Sung Il, India, the subsidiary of a South Korean group that specializes in recycling. The batteries are broken down into their various components. The metallic waste is sold to metal dealers. And the valuable black mass is sent to South Korea for further processing. We recover all the valuable metals uh, like cobalt, nickel, lithium, uh, manganese, copper and again we send it to our uh, contractor like Samsung to manufacture new battery. And Sung Il India intends to work more closely with Nunam in the future. They want to make sure that the used EV batteries are recycled and reused effectively. We are also planning to set up uh, such a dismantling unit with Nunam so that uh, from the electric vehicle we can get uh, reusable and, and as well as recyclable materi um, material. So whatever reusable that will go to Nunam and whatever recyclable that will be processed in Sangil. There's also a focus on sustainability in battery production. Nagafani Etukuri is the head of the Research Centre for Energy Storage at the Indian Institute of Science in Bengaluru. He has been analysing Second Life batteries for a long time. Repurposing batteries really cost me maybe about 10% of the cost of recycling a battery. The energy cost, the, the cost and the environment uh, in terms of chemicals that will be used for recycling um, and, and the cost and the environment in terms of waste that comes out of recycling batteries. The big advantage of Second Life batteries? They're more environmentally friendly than new batteries and much cheaper. If I can cut down the cost of storing electricity to a common man, it probably will bring every single um, person in the country to have the same level of basic amenities that otherwise don't exist in some of the remote areas. And, in, and bringing that equality is, is in itself a big social reform, I think. After all, it's this sort of battery that helps Salman sell his wares late into the night on the outskirts of Bengaluru. Benefit me ये है सर कि उजाला ज़्यादा रहता है काम में भी अच्छा रहता है थोड़ा उजाला भी अच्छा दिखता है. At the tailor shop in Kanchanahalli, women can now sew dresses with electric sewing machines thanks to a Nunam battery. They are faster and earn more money. So a bit of electricity creates an economic upswing in a poor region. Second Life batteries can have a huge social impact. This, in addition to the effect they have on the environment, because there are more and more e-cars on the streets. With growing aspirations of electric mobility in India, consumption of batteries has significantly increased. The carbon footprint of battery production can be significantly reduced by reusing them in stationary storage infrastructure. Creating batteries without infinitely mining out resources from, uh, from the planet is, is probably going to decide whether this is a sustainable solution or not. So I see repurposing as part and parcel of this ecosystem uh, of um, uh, electric vehicles and electrification in general.
Second Life Batteries, the solution for truly sustainable mobility. Do you agree? Let us know what you think in the comments.